but uh, I see there are still people coming in, Francesco, so it's, it's good that yeah, you're just hanging on. We don't want them to miss this important message that's coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see it's now three minutes past 11. I think that's maybe enough time. Maybe there are still a few latecomers, but let me officially um, start this. Um, my name is, of course, Werner Janssen van Rensburg. I'm the research manager at the, the CHPC, and thank you very much to everybody that's on the line. I think... Um, from a CHPC perspective, these webinars are proving to be quite a, a, a well-received initiative from the CHPC. I think apart from the fact that everybody is used to these virtual sessions by now, I think it's, it's a way for the CHPC to also reach many more of our users and interested um, people, um, in, people interested in the work of the CHPC. And it's very much about giving the opportunities to the researchers um, that are involved with the CHPC to showcase what they are doing. Um, today, we are very privileged to have Professor Francesco Petruccioni from UKZN on, on, the, uh, on the call for presenting a webinar. This is actually, Francesco, the seventh webinar that we are doing now since we've started with this. So we, on average, we do this about once a, a month or so. Um, and as I said, uh, people are already participating well. But just for everybody's um, interest, uh, Professor Francesco, um, you are, of course, involved in many things uh, with CHPC and the broader Nikis, and, and I'm sure I cannot list all of them because I'm not even involved in all of it, but I know that your, your involvement are in many areas. And, and, of course, when it comes to things like quantum computing, big data, informatics, this is when we call upon you, I think, to, to advise us and to, to be involved. Um, I think the most tangible involvement, of course, in the last well, what is it now, four years already, is the direct involvement of, well, first, NETHEC, the National Institute of Theoretical Physics, which has now, of course, changed or expanded to the National Institute of Theoretical Computational Science, NETHEC, uh, your involvement in the, the summer coding school that we are, are hosting. And, and the, the, the last one ended just the end of last week. I think it just shows a tangible way of, of us collaborating to the benefit of the community as a whole not only the CHPC, but, but the computational sciences community out there. Um, so, of course, Professor Peter Joni is the director of NETHEX. Um, um, and I think it is very appropriate, Francesca, to focus your talk on the activities and the focus and the purpose of NETHEX today. So without using more time, I'm going to hand over to you. And thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Werner. It's really a big uh, pleasure uh, to be here. Let me quickly start sharing my, uh, my screen so that I can, uh, uh, here we go. Okay, perfect. No, thank you very much. It's, it's, it's really nice to, uh, to be here and to have the opportunity to, to speak about NITEX. Yeah? And uh, sorry, I, I slightly changed the title of my talk because uh, uh, Werner mentioned in his very kind uh, introduction, uh, my involvement in, um, in the, the quantum computing aspect of, 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 of things. And there is another very relevant national initiative uh, around quantum computing. Uh, so that at the end of the talk, I will spend maybe the last five minutes uh, to share that initiative because it might be relevant for, for, for some of you as well. Some of you might want to, uh, to, to join <laughs> into that initiative uh, as well. So uh, that's why, ah, sorry, what, what's going on ah, here? That's why um, <clears throat> the, the aim of my talk is uh, first of all, 95% uh, to, 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 to share with you uh, what this new National Institute for Theoretical and Computational Sciences <clears throat> Uh, also called NITEX uh, is about. In the last five minutes, I, I will mention the South African Quantum Technology Initiative, which is also uh, a DSE, DSI uh, supported uh, initiative that has just been launched uh, this year, essentially. Yeah? And, and, um, and hopefully we will also grow into something uh, significant and 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 and, and relevant. Yeah. <clears throat> so the, so th this this webinar will probably be different from the previous six webinars in the series because I won't talk much about science. I will talk more about uh, uh, opportunities. Yeah. 
and, uh, and, 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 and framework. So, but um, at another time, I will be more than happy to give a scientific talk as well. So let me start <clears throat> the, 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 with a historical note. Yeah. note yeah. Uh, we are here uh, today because of, uh, of the old NITEP, yeah, which was the National uh, Institute for Theoretical Physics. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, NITEP was, was um, introduced in 2008 as a kind of the home for, for theoretical physics in, in the country. Yeah? I think in 2004, uh, there was um, a, a study commissioned by DSI and NRF to investigate the status of physics uh, in the country. And, uh, and this international panel that reviewed physics in, in South Africa made a few recommendations. And one of them was to do more for theoretical physics because there was up to the time, no real coherent framework to support theoretical physics in the country. And theoretical studies are, are, are essentially cheap. <laughs> so with a, with a low investment, what could expect a, a high return uh, in, 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 you know, on, the, on, the, on the investment. Yeah? So that, uh, of course, it took a little while, but eventually 2008, uh, this, um, NITEP was, uh, uh, was formed. And NITEP was formed as a node structure. Yeah, it had a, a main contractual node in, in Stellenbosch, and then a secondary and uh, secondary nodes at, U, at UKZ10, where I am based, and uh, and and at WITS. Yeah, and um, sorry, and this is important because <clears throat> in the early beginning of the history of NITEP, uh, although we have national institute in the name. Uh, NRF decided that it was easier to manage it as a center of excellence. Yeah? And um, <clears throat> that led to the problem that, as you know, that center of excellence has a finite uh, lifespan <laughs> and a sunset clause. Yeah? So that when uh, NITEP reached the sunset clause, there was need to come up with, uh, with a plan. Yeah? And, and NITEX is the plan yeah, to save uh, NITEP in a certain sense. <clears throat> but I will get to that just now. So over the years, uh, NITEP has been uh, quite successful. Yeah, we, we published some 800 papers, graduated more than 200 uh, masters and PhD students. We had a network of around 70, 80 uh, associates. Uh, and in the various uh, rankings of physical institutions in, in, um, in Africa, yeah, we were always in the, in, in the top three. So that was not bad for a, for a small institute. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, one of the things that uh, NITEP uh, does uh, is um, we have a bursary program, yeah, uh, and and you see this is the, the, the statistic. Sorry, it's, it's, um, I have today on the slide, but it means last year, yeah, because we're still finalizing the bursary distribution of of, uh, of this year. And you see, we we, we distribute bursaries uh, across ten some years. It's a dozen university in the country uh, with a good. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, good coverage on, on a national uh, basis. Yeah, so on average, you see here, we have around 30 bursary per year. Last year, we had a little dip, but that was mainly due because of the change in system on, of awarding bursaries from, uh, from NRF that um, you know, some students missed to give us the, <laughs> to, 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 to submit the code of NITEP. And, uh, and so we, we missed a few, but we are in, in the process of, of, of improving that system for this year. Yeah? You see, this is the, the demographics of a, of a typical year of, of bursary holders. You see, it's not uh, yet perfect, but, uh, but we are slowly getting there. <clears throat> Another program that uh, NITEP was very successful with was the internship program. Yeah, because you saw uh, we don't have bursaries at honors level, but we have, but we offer internships at honors level. Yeah, which help uh, students um, complete their honors projects. Yeah, some students write their honors project under the supervision or co-supervision of, of, of a NITEP uh, uh, associate. And, um, and get exposed to, to maybe to, to topics that uh, they might not have uh, at, their own, uh, at their own university. And this is a program that has been running over years. The last couple of years, it was virtual, yeah? <clears throat> but uh, it worked very well never, nevertheless. Yeah? <clears throat> With the, the moment uh, COVID hit us, and uh, you know, I, I was appointed uh, as director of NITEX 
uh, on the 1st of April, two years ago, which was just one week into the, hard, into the first hard lockdown of, uh, of COVID. So we had to, uh, to move overnight, essentially everything online. And, and you see, these are statistics of our first year of, uh, of online programs. You see, we, we, <clears throat> we moved our colloquia, the webinars, the, the, our monthly mini school, all online. And you see, we managed to reach many more people uh, than, than we would have been able to, to reach uh, earlier. Yeah? And all our talks, um, um, you can also find on our YouTube channel. Yeah? Just uh, Google uh, NITEX on YouTube and, 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 and you will find it. Uh, immediately. Yeah? <clears throat> there are just a few talks missing of speakers that didn't want to be recorded and that, of course, we have to respect. Yeah? So this is the, the, our, our YouTube channel and you see these are the statistics up to the middle of last year. We, we should re renew this, uh, uh, this slide. And we had already 25,000 views, yeah? which, is, which is not bad. Now we have already way above more than 1,000 subscribers. Uh, and uh, so, so that our next goal is to hit the 2,000 subscribers uh, goal yeah, that uh, hopefully we will achieve that this year. <clears throat> when we started the transition from NITEC to NITEC, you see this is a screenshot of, an, of, of some time ago when we were still in the, in the transition phase. Uh, we, we relaunched also the, 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 the NITEC uh, website and we are um, working very hard to make it a kind of a platform for all things theoretical and, uh, uh, and computational. So this is of course a, a work in progress that will never end, but uh, you're most than welcome to, 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 to visit the website and you will find the links to all the relevant, uh, relevant things. <clears throat> with, with the beginning of the transition, we also started, um, to, to, to develop research programs. Yeah? And um, <clears throat> last year we had the, the first round of research programs. It was something that NITEP itself never really had, but we have now uh, research programs in, uh, in the same computational material science and computational astrophysics uh, in, of course, uh, COVID motivated also some uh, <clears throat> theoretical modeling for, for COVID issues, uh, almost, uh, mandatory machine learning uh, research program, um, big data for nuclear physics. <clears throat> and, and, um, and this year we have roughly the same research programs, uh, but we added uh, research programs on, on, on biodiversity and, uh, and, and bioinformatics uh, as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Another thing that we are setting up uh, is a kind of, uh, um, at the beginning we called the South African Theory School because it was for the NITEP, um, heritage, yeah, but now we call it officially theory and computational school, where we want to offer, uh, to start offering a kind of honors level courses that are accessible to everyone in the country. Yeah? So if you go on the, on the NITEP website, you will see under training, there is a link to our, to our school, and um, <clears throat> there is already quite a, a large offering of, of, of courses that students across the country can, uh, uh, can, can attend. Yeah? What we uh, we just starting, yeah. But so what we what we intend doing is that uh, is uh, engaging with um, with the various universities, so that students that attend one of these courses that maybe is not offered at the home institution uh, might have a mechanism to earn the the the, <clears throat> the well deserved credits. Yeah? So that is is something that um, will require a little bit of time, but that's something that. Uh, uh, that we want to achieve. We are also in, in discussion with um, <clears throat> the National uh, Graduate Academy in Mathematics and Statistics, yeah, which is a, <clears throat> a similar um, kind of advanced school um, that emerged from the COE uh, of Mathematics and Statistical Sciences. Yeah? So that um, <clears throat> we're also looking at the possibility maybe to, to merge these two efforts into into one at, uh, at some stage. <clears throat> um, as as NITEX, we, we also started uh, aggressively <laughs> trying to raise funds that don't come straight from, from, from NRF. And one of the, the, the things that we started doing uh, last year was uh, to develop uh, methods, um, so mathematical and computationally inspired method to improve the efficiency of, of, of testing for, for COVID. Yeah? And, and one of the methods 
uh, that, um, that we're starting exploring, <clears throat> thanks to a special grant of DSI, uh, is a method, it's a kind of a hypercube method for, for pool testing. Yeah? But this is a, this is a topic of another, of another talk. So, <laughs> so these are the things that, that, that we started doing in the early phases of, of the transition. And since last year, um, when, when the minister eventually signed off uh, NITEX, we moved to, uh, to fully fledged uh, NITEX mode. Yeah? Um, <clears throat> and let, let me explain to you, because you know, it's a little bit of our, our history, yeah? uh, the process that led to, uh, to NITEX. Yeah? <clears throat> I motivated uh, in, at the beginning the, 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 the need to come up with a solution to, to help NITEP survive uh, the, the, the center of excellent uh, sunset clause. Yeah? So that a couple of years ago, uh, DSI together with NRF developed a kind of a idea that uh, maybe the way to save NITEP is to make it bigger, yeah? to, to, to include in the institute other disciplines. Yeah? So there were a few stakeholder workshops uh, just to, to test the, 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 the ground yeah? and see if the idea was well received by the respective community. Out of these, uh, an expert working group <clears throat> was, uh, was set up, um, <clears throat> including experts in the disciplines that are now part of, of, of NITEX. I will explain them in a minute. And the task team uh, made essentially out of people from from NITEP, yeah, and DSI, yeah, just you know to, to to ensure some kind of continuity and sharing of experiences of the past. Yeah, so the first step was a, a document <clears throat> that uh, is available on the NITEX uh, website uh, to demonstrate the, the scientific case for for NITEX, yeah, so that uh, it is something that 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 makes sense <laughs> in, in our South African context. Yeah. When this was approved by, by DSI, um, the same expert working group together with, uh, with myself, we were tasked to, to, to develop a roadmap, yeah? essentially a roadmap from, for the transition yeah? from NITEP uh, to NITEX. And when eventually the roadmap was approved, uh, we, uh, we developed a kind of an implementation plan. Is that what, what, what we are busy doing at, at the moment? Yeah? So that the plan at the moment is that NITEX will be fully fledged up and running uh, essentially by the end of the year. So that um, maybe at the beginning of next year, there will be an official inauguration and, and, and so on and so forth. So that is the plan. Just to briefly let you know, these are the people that were involved in the, in the task team. <clears throat> you see at the beginning, it was still DST. <clears throat> they were representatives from DST, from NRF, uh, essentially the, the, the uh, the directors and deputy directors of, of, of NITEP and, and, um, and Dr. Happy Sitole from, from, from the CSPC. <clears throat> yeah, and that is an obvious link because now we also have computational in the name. Yeah? These are the members of the expert working group. Uh, and essentially it's uh, two members per discipline that, that ended up being part of, uh, of, of NITEX. I, I will list them just now. Okay, you can see them here. Uh, and, and the expert working group was, was uh, coordinated by, by Professor Igle uh, Glethill. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so these are the two documents that, that, that came out <laughs> of this process. Yeah, first of all, here on the right, the, 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 the scientific case, and here at the end of 2020, uh, the, um, the roadmap that then was approved at the beginning of 2021, and, and then officially we started uh, operating under the NITEX uh, name. Yeah. <clears throat> so what is NITEX about? Yeah, <clears throat> uh, very uh, simply, uh, maybe let's look at the, at the graph here on the, on the right hand side of, of, of your screen. Um, NITEX is based on, on four pillars. Yeah? And, 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 and what the roadmap uh, and, and the other scientific case documents stress is that all four pillars should be set on, on equal footing. Yeah? So there is, of course, the obvious uh, research training, yeah? uh, but now we have also engagement, yeah? which means engagement across all levels of, uh, of, of stakeholders, if you want, yeah? from the general public to the learners to, to, to government, industry, and so on and so forth. And of course, Africa, yeah? so, so that uh, we should never forget that we are uh, embedded on the on the African uh, continent, and of course embedded in uh, in South Africa 
first. I, I, I won't read the vision and mission statement. You will have read it <clears throat> on your own uh, just now. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And these are the eight disciplines of uh, of, of NICTEX. Yeah. Uh, I have these two different graphical representations. The one uh, on the left, the, the circle, is the one that uh, the roadmap uh, adopted. Yeah? And you see we have uh, uh, theoretical physics, was part of NITEP, is still part of NITEX, uh, astronomy and astrophysics. You know, it's, sometimes it's not so easy to, 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 to define <laughs> the, this border. Yeah? So that some astrophysicists were, of course, already members of NITEX, NITEP before, but a completely new, uh, and of course, this if, if, if I say astronomy and astrophysics, I mean the, the, the computational aspects and not the building of, 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 of dishes and, and things like that, just the computational and data analytic aspects of the, of the business. Yeah? And then we have other basic sciences. Yeah? We have statistics, uh, mathematics, uh, data science, <clears throat> yeah? And uh, some maybe a touch more applied um, basic sciences, yeah, the, the, the quantitative aspects of, of biology and bioinformatics, the, 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 the quantitative and computational aspects <clears throat> of earth and, and climate uh, modeling and quantitative finance. Yeah? <clears throat> so these are the, the, the eight disciplines uh, that NITEX is, um, <clears throat> is supporting at the moment. Yeah? There is, of course, if you look at it uh, immediately, you know, and, and we receive regularly complaints, there is one basic science missing, <laughs> which is chemistry. Yeah? So at the moment, we, we formally, we are not uh, um, supporting uh, computational and, and theoretical chemistry, but you know, uh, even there, uh, it's very difficult sometimes to, to, to distinguish it from theoretical and computational physics. Yeah? But, uh, the eight disciplines, this is just the start of NITEX. It's, uh, we don't want to exclude that at some later stage, <clears throat> we will include formally uh, computational aspect of chemistry as well, because we, we get lots of requests. Yeah? And we have uh, uh, allowed some to become associates when in the cases where you know, the border between chemistry and physics, you know, it's not so, not so, not so hard. Um, the, the, the illustration on the right, um, we developed uh, more recently, yeah? and, and I like this very much because, you know, <clears throat> if we want to make an institute like this work, yeah, we can't have eight separate silos. We need to find uh, some common ground, yeah? and, that's the, and, and, the, and the glue for the common ground are, are our research programs. So we wanted the research programs uh, to address really uh, important uh, challenges, yeah? for instance, the, the sustainable development goals uh, or, or things of that kind. And the argument is that, uh, you know, by joining forces, say between mathematics, data science, theoretical physics, maybe we can come up with, with tools that climate change modeling could use yeah? or tools that quantitative finance could use and, and, and so on and so forth. So the, the, so the hope is that or the vision is that uh, by, by joining forces, we can address serious challenges. And in doing so, maybe we can also attract serious funding from the big international donors that support those kind of activities. Yeah? And maybe each discipline on its own, maybe wouldn't have been able to do, uh, to do so. So it's really important that, uh, and, and we invest a lot of uh, effort in trying to bring the different disciplines to speak to each other. Not because we want to, 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 to delete, the, the, to cancel the, the, the identity of the, of the disciplines, but just to try to do more out of the sum of the, of the parts. Yeah? <clears throat> so uh, one, <coughs> sorry, one question that, that, that comes often is, is uh, where, where is NITEX placed? Yeah? And of course, we, we don't operate in a vacuum. Yeah? There are lots of uh, other institutions and, and you know, the, the, the symbols that uh, I've listed here are not uh, exhaustive of, uh, there are many more, they just didn't fit no, anymore on the slide. Yeah? So that we, we need to find our space in the South African uh, science uh, ecosystem. Yeah? But there is of course one institution that is critical for, for NITEX and that's of course the CHPC, yeah? because now we have both uh, computational uh, in the name. Yeah? And that's why already several years ago, we started organizing together summer schools, 
and and we are planning other other events <coughs> together in, in in the near future yeah so the, the, there will always be a special relationship with the ccp and we are building um, relationship in forms of uh, uh, letters of understanding, memorandum of understanding with, uh, at the end, all of the, <laughs> all of these other institutions so that we, um, we will collaborate with them and, and, and not, um, and not fight them. Yeah, we, we want to be constructive and, 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 and productive. Yeah? <clears throat> so if, if some of you are, are part of some institution that we have not yet reached out, please let me know. We, we are very happy to, uh, to engage with everybody. <clears throat> Uh, just uh, <clears throat> as um, you know, this, this is probably a boring slide. Um, how the, the the roadmap envisions uh, NITEX uh, to operate? Uh, we have uh, at the moment already a, a steering committee that rep is representative of the of the various disciplines as well, together with representative from industry, from BSI, NRF, and so on and so forth. Um, we are in the process of setting up a scientific advisory board. Yeah, <clears throat> we have a, a management committee, and our three, let's say, administrative uh, elements yeah, uh, are the network of associates. Yeah, and I will explain to you later uh, how you can become uh, uh, an associate and get involved uh, with NITEX. <clears throat> Once you're an associate, you will have access. To, 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 to all the, the tools and support uh, of NITEX. And, and our secret weapon are these focus areas that uh, or, or research programs yeah, where we want people to come together and, uh, and, and work together to solve uh, serious, uh, serious problems. Yeah? NITEX will have, again, uh, a node structure. Yeah? Uh, at the moment, uh, NITEP has three, uh, Stellenbosch, WITS, and UKZ10. And uh, NRF is busy uh, issuing uh, a call uh, for, for the old nodes to be, <laughs> to reapply to stay a node and for new nodes to, to, to join the network. Yeah, because uh, what we really would like uh, at a minimum is to make NITEX really a national institute so that uh, one midterm goal could be or should be to have at least one node in every province. Yeah, at the moment we cover three, but uh, no, uh, ideally we want to, to, to reach a state where we have at least a, a physical presence uh, in every province. Then of course, at later stage, if there is a more, even better. Yeah? But uh, um, as a short or uh, midterm goal, uh, we would like to be present in every province. <clears throat> yeah. So this is the structure of, of, of the management committee. Um, nothing particularly exciting. It's fairly fairly straightforward. <clears throat> uh, okay, this is maybe not so important. What is uh, <coughs> what is interesting, uh, maybe for you to know, is that the various stages of uh, uh, of the implementation of NITEX. Yeah? So we started two years ago in, in, in this uh, first uh, transition phase. Yeah? And now we are essentially in this, uh, uh, in this foundational phase. And, and hopefully by the end of this year, we will tick off <laughs> the, the, two other, uh, the two other boxes. Yeah? As soon as uh, uh, the call for nodes goes out, we will start uh, then uh, uh, setting up uh, the, 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 the legal aspects of the, of the operation. <clears throat> Uh, last year, uh, as soon as we were allowed by, by DSI to, 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 to promote NITEX as, as, as such, we, we embarked on a, on, on, on a roadshow. And here are just uh, some of the, of, the, um, of the institution where we presented NITEX. I think we did around 20 last year. There are just a few spots where we haven't uh, been in terms of university. And I need to update now the, 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 the slide and include the CHPC logo. Yeah? So th that we really put a, a lot of effort in, in, re in reaching out. Yeah? Um, you know, at the end of last year, yeah, and this is a slide that I used at the last steering committee meeting, we had already reached uh, the critical number of 200 associates. Yeah? Uh, individual associates are. are Probably by now, probably more than 170. So we are we are we are slowly reaching the the, the, the 200 number. Yeah? Uh, then we have a few strategic and institutional associates that we are building up. These are all the, the, the our partners in, uh, in in the South African ecosystem. Yeah. <clears throat> so you see, it's it's, it's we, are, we are not small <laughs> anymore. We almost tripled or at least doubled the, the numbers of associates from. 
uh, from what NITEP had. Yeah? Um, you know, and and um, and I can uh, show you here the, this this slide. Um, this describes a little bit the distribution of uh, of associates um, under NITEP and now under NITEX. Yeah, and you see that uh, the move to NITEX helped us a lot, moving in in the right direction. Yeah, uh, of course we are not yet uh, where we should be. Yeah, but um, but slowly we, we we will get there. Just optically, you see that we are we are, we are definitely moving in the in the right direction. Yeah, that that is, that is very good news. Yeah. Uh, just to show you here where, where, where the associates uh, sit, um, you see, we have a, because of the history, yeah, we have a, a large presence in the Western Cape, a large presence at, in, uh, in KZ10, uh, a strong presence in Gauteng. And, and there is only one province here where, where we don't have associates, yeah, but then we, we are working hard to, to, to develop that, uh, that further. And all these numbers, of course, in the provinces that don't have nodes are increasing, and hopefully soon we will be able to, to have a physical presence there as well, so that those numbers can, can increase as well. Yeah? Okay, this is a little bit of a busy, busy slide where we try to <clears throat> Again, have the numbers of associates per, per province. You see, in Pumalanga is the only one where we have at zero, yeah? and 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 we want to to change that. And then we we also list the, the disciplines that are present in the various uh, provinces. Uh, and you see, uh, Western Cape, <coughs> Gauteng, and KwaZulu Natal. We have essentially representative of of, of everything. In other provinces, uh, maybe we have a representative in, in a couple of. Uh, of, of, of discipline, so that also will have to, to change over time. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, um, just to show you, uh, sorry, this is maybe not reflected in the last number, but you see that the character of NITEX is changing dramatically. Yeah? Uh, when we started, it was all blue, of course, because it was just theoretical physics. And, and now, in 2022, theoretical physics is already the, the, in, in the minority. So I just realized that I need to update this slide. Yeah? So that the character of the institution is changing dramatically. Yeah? Theoretical physics is still the biggest slice, but no longer the, the so in a democratic election, <laughs> theoretical physics wouldn't have the, 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 the majority anymore. Yeah? And, and that's good because that's the spirit of the, of the new institute. Yeah? <clears throat> um, so here you see these are the the, the um, uh, where we are represented. You see we are we are. Oh sorry, what is this? Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah, sorry, sorry. Yes, someone is calling here. Sorry, sorry. Ah, I can't stop it. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. Let me. Um, how do I do it now? Ah, I. I Sorry, my apology. I pressed the do not disturb, but it didn't help. Uh, uh, let me, sorry, uh, I quickly closed this annoying team. Sorry, sorry, my apology. Voila. Uh, I, can you see it again, the, the presentation? Yeah, no, it's looking fine. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I put on not, do not disturb, but the Teams is super aggressive. <laughs> sorry for that. Um, so you see, we are represented at almost all universities. Yeah? There are just a few traditional universities were not presented. One comprehensive university were not present and, and half of the University of Technology. Yeah? <clears throat> And at most HDIs, we are not presented. And you know, and this is kind of a, of, a, uh, of a little problem. But if you do this, that uh, you could deduce that these are the university where, where, where we're not, where we don't have associates at the moment. Yeah. And and of course, we we, we try to to reach out to those and, and and try to change it as soon as possible. Yeah. So, you see, NITEX as NITEP <laughs> did in the past. Uh, revolves around associates. Yeah? Associates are our 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 strength. Yeah. So and, and associates do everything. Yeah. The, those are the guys that do the research, that do the training, the outreach, the engagement, and that should help us achieve the goals that uh, that society wants us to to achieve. Yeah. We have, uh, as I indicated before, four categories of, of associates. Huh? Let me check the time. Yeah, we have individual associates, uh, junior associates, institutional associates, and strategic associates. Yeah? 
um, institutional associates is obvious. Right? There's institutions that have uh, similar similar goals and others like some of the institutions that I mentioned before. Yeah? Strategic associate might be uh, either institution or, or individuals that maybe are not directly involved in our eight discipline, but for whatever reason uh, could assist us in, uh, uh, in, in promoting and achieving uh, our goals. Yeah? So how do you become an associate? Yeah. <clears throat> the, the, the minimum requirements are that, uh, you know, that you have uh, at least a, a PhD in one of the disciplines, yeah? um, that you have a, a job, that you're a staff member at a South African university or, or research facility. Uh, and then we will ask you to, to send us a, a brief motivation, uh, a CV. And, uh, and then we will ask the, the representative of the discipline to, to check that, that, that you are a, a legate uh, researcher in, in one of the areas that we promote, and then you can become an, uh, an associate. Yeah? So we, we try to keep the bureaucracy at, uh, at a minimum. Yeah? Um, interesting maybe for the younger members in, in, in this webinar, uh, how do you become a junior associate? So the junior associates, um, traditionally, when, when we were just NITEP, we, 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 we were aiming for staff members at university, think, for instance, of, of a lecturer who's still uh, working on, uh, on, on his or her uh, PhD, yeah? Uh, so that, that would be the minimum requirement for a junior associate, yeah? And then we, uh, we try to, 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 to to align the, the junior associate maybe with a more senior member of uh, associate who could act as a mentor and make and, and, and we try to assist the junior associate to uh, to complete the phd and 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 and, and, uh, and boost uh, the, the the academic uh, the academic career yeah by by integrating them in our uh, in our network yeah <clears throat> But when we started developing the, the reaching out in our <laughs> roadshows, we were confronted a few times with the request. And what do you do if you have a PhD, but you have only a postdoc position at a South African university? Yeah? And, uh, and that uh, I think is a category that, uh, <clears throat> that would have fallen a little bit through the cracks. Yeah? So that uh, we decided to, to <clears throat> to enlarge the scope of the junior associate category. So the essential it is uh, you have a PhD and no job, or you have a job and no PhD. Yeah? So if you fulfill <laughs> those two, two requirements, uh, you're most than welcome to, to, to apply uh, as a junior uh, associate. Yeah? <clears throat> and you can just send an email to, to the email address below, or we have also an email address info at NITEX that, that you can use for the purpose as well. Yeah. So, once you're an associate, how do you benefit? Yeah? Um, first of all, you, 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 you will receive all the support for, for all your activities through, through, uh, through NITEX. Yeah? You will be encouraged to take part in our research programs or in our focus areas yeah? that we support with, uh, uh, with, with a substantial amount of, uh, of funding. Yeah? Uh, we have dedicated um, <clears throat> calls or, or requests for pro for proposals. Uh, you know, I, I shouldn't use the word call because uh, you know Nitex is is not a funding agency. Yeah, we, we are a research institution with training and engagement and so on and so forth. So that we try to to let all the uh, activities that we support emerge from the wishes of, 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 the, of the community. Yeah? So I, I should call this more a request for proposals than, than, than a call. Yeah? Uh, we have a bursaries program uh, for master's, PhD. We have our internship program where you, your students can be supported. And of course, um, we give you access to, 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 to a network of, of, of similarly minded uh, uh, researchers. Yeah? <clears throat> And under the, the, the dedicated request for proposals, I mean, the last two years, that was not very active because we didn't have many or we didn't have at all uh, workshops in person that we supported, but uh, uh, we also support uh, travel grants uh, for, for, for associates, uh, for their students, uh, to invite visitors. So we had all those programs in place that we hopefully will ramp up again this year. Uh, when uh, because the, the, the COVID <laughs> conditions improved significantly. Yeah. <clears throat> um, last year, we signed <clears throat> uh, a letter of understanding with ICTP. 
yeah? uh, the International Center for Theoretical Physics in, in Trieste, uh, which is an institution <clears throat> that uh, uh, evolved essentially a little bit like MITEX, because if you look at the, what ICTP does, there is a rough, almost nearly 100% <laughs> um, overlap with, with the research activities of, of MITEX. Yeah? And we are busy now um, formalizing the LOU in a memorandum of understanding uh, because DSI <coughs> asked, <coughs> asked MITEX. Uh, um, so DSI is, is supporting the interaction with ICTP, yeah? but because of this affinity now between NITEX and ICTP, um, DSI has ringfax funds that NITEX will administer uh, to, to allow the interaction with ICTP to, <clears throat> to work in a, in, a, in a very smooth way. And, and we are just finalizing, hopefully in the next couple of weeks or months, we will have a formal MOU that involves also uh, a funding component um, that uh, so that, that, that we can really kickstart uh, this, uh, this this engagement and uh, um, and I really encourage you all to, to subscribe to our newsletter and mailing list so that we can share with you all these opportunities. <clears throat> yeah, uh, we started last year also to to publish under the NITEX name. Yeah, that's the only thing that that, that we request from our associates to please put the NITEX affiliation on the, on the publication because that's one of our deliverables <laughs> that uh, DSI and NRF check every year. But uh, having said that, NITEX <clears throat> does not access the, 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 the reward for publication from the Department of Higher Education and Training. So, so that uh, you can still receive through your, <laughs> through your, through your institution. Yeah, NITEX doesn't, uh, doesn't access that so that, uh, uh, just for, for, for simplicity, yeah? Okay, this, uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, okay, I think I spoke a little bit longer than I thought. Um, let me now maybe, unless you have uh, urgent questions regarding NITEX, otherwise I can briefly mention um, uh, to a few minutes uh, the, the South African quantum technology <clears throat> uh, initiative, and, and, and you're welcome to ask the question later, as, as you wish. <clears throat> Francesco, I think you can continue and, and complete first, and then you will come Okay, to okay. I, I just need a few minutes. Good. Yeah. So, okay. uh, last, over the last couple of years, um, DSI uh, appointed um, a kind of a panel or a committee uh, to develop uh, a roadmap for quantum technology in, in, in South Africa. Yeah? And um, I was the, the co-chair of, uh, of that committee, and, um, and we wrote... Um, a roadmap, a framework document uh, that um, I'm, if you're interested, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to share with you. We, we are in the process of setting up a, a website for this as well, where, where, where you will find it, of course. Yeah? So, uh, uh, sorry. Um, so, you know, wh why uh, is this important? This is very important because uh, quantum computing and, and, and quantum technology um, have um, increased in, in, in impact all over the world. Yeah, there, are, there is almost no more serious country anymore that doesn't have some kind of quantum computing or quantum technology roadmap. Yeah? Uh, the USA are investing billions of dollars in quantum technology, China even more, yeah? uh, Canada, Australia, Japan, South Korea, they all have uh, uh, Europe, yeah? they all have important quantum technology roadmaps and, uh, and initiatives, yeah? And it is important <clears throat> because, uh, you know, the, uh, in the last century, we saw the, the, some of the merger of information science and, and quantum physics, yeah? And this is what led to what is called quantum information processing and communication that has essentially three pillars, yeah? There is uh, a new paradigm for, for computation, quantum computing, uh, a new paradigm for secure communication. This is uh, quantum communication, quantum cryptography, and quantum metrology, yeah? because these quantum approaches to metrology are the most precise uh, measurement techniques that, that uh, humanity has ever developed. Yeah? 
you know, without quantum metrology, we couldn't detect gravitational waves and, and, and uh, we couldn't measure the time precisely and, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah? The SKA couldn't synchronize its dishes <laughs> without atomic clocks yeah? and, and things like that. So that what is emerging now is that the, the vision yeah, is that, you know, these three pillars will lead in the near future to a quantum internet. Yeah, we know already how to do quantum internet via, via fiber and via satellite. So in principle, we already know how to, how to build it. Yeah? So that <coughs> um, we did a little bit of, uh, uh, of, of, uh, of statistics on, uh, on an inventory of, um, of what um, uh, quantum activities are, are present in the, in the country and, and it's all nicely listed in the framework document. And um, you know, we already, in South Africa, published several hundred papers on, on, the, on the topic. There are more than 50 graduates, uh, hundreds of invited talks and news stories, uh, patents, uh, lots of trainings, events, and so on and so forth. Yeah, but this was all uncoordinated. Yeah? Everybody who did something did it. There was no, and, and what we want to achieve now is a little bit of a level of uh, bringing a level of coherence uh, in, in, in the system. Yeah? So that what the roadmap that was approved by DSI uh, wants is just uh, uh, to build uh, skills and a critical mass of um, future quantum technology uh, workforce, yeah? create the right environment, st starting engaging with industry to slowly develop a quantum industry. Yeah? You, know, you know, worldwide there are hundreds of startups that raised hundreds of millions of, of, of dollars. Yeah? Um, um, you, you probably, and it's not just the big players, yeah? it's not just the IBMs, Intels, and Microsoft. Uh, there are many new startups that are called Xanadu, uh, Zapata, One Qubit, and so on and so forth. And all of them have, have raised hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah? Uh, a former student of mine, after his BEC, he won a startup competition in Canada and raised on his own five, six million dollars for his, for his startup company. So that, that's something that we need to realize here, here as well. Yeah? And then of course, because I, I showed you the various pillars of quantum technology, uh, there is an interface with, with, with the converging technology platform of, of, of DSI. Yeah? Uh, at the moment, we have uh, a little bit similar, similar to the NITEP concept. We have um, three or four main, co main, main centers uh, in the Western Cape, uh, in KwaZulu Natal, and, and, and in Gauteng. <clears throat> and we have a few partner centers uh, scattered across the, 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 the country and, and various other institutions that are happy to, to work with us. Uh, at the moment, um, DSI made uh, WITS the contractual site for, for these initiatives, and these are the current nodes of the, of the consortium. Yeah? And the CHPC uh, plays a critical role uh, because you know, the CHPC is the institution that uh, will give us access to the quantum computers. Yeah? So that uh, in the budget for this uh, uh, quantum technology framework, there's also a budget for quantum computing time. Yeah? You know, all existing quantum computers are, are, are in the cloud. And, um, and the budget is, is to cover the, the, the expenses that uh, the, the CHPC will incur in future uh, to give us access uh, to, to, to quantum computers. Yeah? <clears throat> At the moment, um, WITS started uh, an initiative to, because they, they are on their campus, there is a, an IBM research center to provide um, access to the IBM quantum computer to, to all South African uh, universities. Yeah? But this is supposed to move to the, to the CHPC for, for obvious reasons. Yeah? So this is just a, a, a quick summary. Um, okay, then let me... <clears throat> Um, yeah, maybe ju just one of the flagship projects that, that we are trying to achieve with this uh, uh, quantum technology initiative is to develop uh, a ground station uh, to communicate with one of the quantum <laughs> satellites uh, that China has already built. Yeah, so we have a collaboration with, uh, uh, with China and, uh, and, and we are trying to, um, to build in Durban uh, a ground station to communicate uh, with um, with a quantum, so that in principle we could communicate on, on a quantum secure way all over the all over the world in future. Yeah. Okay. These are the detailed recommendations I mentioned it before. Uh, so let, let let me stop here. 
And uh, if you want to get in touch with, um, uh, with me, you, you can reach me here. And if you want to get in touch with, uh, with NITEX, here is again the, the, the NITEX website and the, and the generic NITEX email address. So thank, thank you very much. Sorry, I spoke probably five minutes longer than I wanted, but um, I'm, I'm happy to answer uh, all questions that, uh, that you might have. Thank you very much, Francesco. No problem. I mean, I don't think you really spoke too long. I mean, we, we set time uh, away for, for these interesting discussions. Thank you for your comprehensive overview. I think um, it is clear to me, and I suppose the audience as well, um, firstly, the dedicated efforts from your side um, over a number of years to build NIFIP and now transitioning it into NIFIX, um, which I think is a very significant development. And I think when it comes to the involvement specifically of CHPC, it's just so much more natural fit now also. I mean, it just expands NIFIX almost to, to what um, I think the CHPC's goals are. The overlap is just so, so good. Um, I certainly have a, a question or comment from, from my side, but maybe I can just uh, uh, read, well, say to the audience again, you can either put a, a question in chat or you can raise your hand and you can, um, can ask a question directly. But before I comment, maybe happy, um, are you, I see your video is on. Do you want to comment or, or question, put the question from your side maybe first? Yes, no, th th thanks, Dana. And uh, thank you, Francesco, for you. Uh, highlighting all these uh, initiatives. I think it's uh, very important that uh, you have this conversation um, so that uh, we can lift out um, these initiatives. And in particular, they are very critical in the development of uh, computational sciences and also of the computing in general. And hence you see um, CHPC being very central uh, to this initiative. I think um, uh, specifically without uh, trying to repeat what Francesco has indicated, the reason we brought in this, uh, the knee tax so that uh, we can develop uh, the computational sciences in the country is that if you look today, um, most of our users of HPC, uh, the applications that they are using is either we borrowing from other countries and uh, we do not have really huge community development um, uh, applications that uh, come from South Africa. And the, the reason that it is, is because there has not been any strategic intent in the country uh, to develop these um, um, initiatives. And uh, some of you, for an example, if you, you are closer to, let's say, for an example, uh, in the UK, they've got what they call the Computational Collaborative Project, the CCPs. And for the material scientists here, um, you, of course, uh, uh, use, I think, uh, people like Anton here, DL Poly. That's uh, something that started from there and it developed into a big project and uh, it became uh, one of the molecular dynamics uh, codes that is used everywhere and developed by the community. It was the, those strategic intents where you can be able to develop applications. I mean, the list is longer, you know, from other countries. So at the end, that's where we would like to get things to be at that level. And, and especially when you go into um, the various computing architectures, if you do not own the source code, you've got very little to maneuver to make sure that you can really scale up well. So we're looking forward in this and uh, um, already the synergy which is there uh, in CHPC, at least with the physics community and through Francesco's uh, um, persuasion and Daniel, we'd like to see that uh, developing in uh, other uh, computational sciences. I, I think I'm also glad that uh, Francesco, the previous uh, uh, webinar was uh, from the um, climate modeling people. And you, know, and you know, one of the big challenges that uh, they want to solve is to try and get a regional model, which is developed in Africa. 
I think those are the type of targets that you should be looking at. And uh, uh, that's very, very, very important. And of course, the second point that you have raised on uh, quantum uh, computing, uh, that's very, very critical. We also would like to make sure that uh, we prepare South Africa uh, for the imminent arrival of uh, uh, quantum computing. And uh, we have to be uh, futuristic and look at uh, the time when classical computing is gone. And uh, the big question is, how ready will we be? Um, uh, some few years ago, uh, graphical processing units were like more for games, but we know now that uh, if you can be able to adopt, uh, you can do far much better computing as opposed to when you are just on the CPU. So those are the things, how the landscape also will shift when we go into um, the, the future and hence that preparation in quantum computing is very critical. So thank you very much, Francesco, for sharing with uh, the community all these initiatives are very important. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Happy. It's an absolute pleasure. And, and I'm sorry, I, I made a mental note to mention uh, during the presentation, but I forgot, mm -hmm. but I will do it now, that the, 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 the links between NITEX and CHPC are really very close because uh, uh, Dr. Happy Zitola is the chair of the steering committee of NITEX. So it's, uh, it's um, you know, the, 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 we are really very close in, 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 in how we develop uh, things and, 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 our, and our collaboration moving forward. No, thank you very much. Much happy for that. Thank you, Happy and, and Francesco. Um, I do not see any questions from the chat or a hand now, but so I'm going to make my comment um, that I was thinking of, and I saw there was a comment made from my colleagues at CHPC about some of the fields that are represented at, um, at or maybe not represented in in the text. And I understand, of course, that this is a is a, is a, a, a work in progress. Um, but I think it's interesting uh, seeing that we're talking about the Nitex CHPC um, connection and, and what are the differences maybe on what we see in terms of the community and what is represented by Nitex. Um, for example, um, yes, the chemistry was mentioned, um, Francesca, and I think that is, is, is getting attention. It is just interesting that chemistry and material science is probably, well, it is the largest user base of the CHPC. About half of our users come from that domain. And interestingly, uh, physics, when we distinguish physics um, by saying, well, all physics that is not material science, it's actually a very small component of, of um, uh, CHPC. So that is interesting. So that material science component is quite um, large. Um, and, but then there's one question I have, and this is um, the other important area at CHPC is, of course, on the engineering, the, the computational mechanics specifically. Um, is, is quite a, a prominent um, research area. Is, is this something that is, is excluded from Netflix, uh, seeing that it's more engineering focused or, or, or what is the thoughts uh, around that? Uh, you know, the, the, you know NITEX uh, came out of the basic sciences uh, compartment of, of DSI. Yeah? So that, that's why we are primarily focused on, uh, on basic sciences and, and some of the obvious ap applications. Yeah? Um, I'm not 100% sure why out of the expert working group, chemistry was not included in the first round. Yeah? I, I guess that because people know that there are so many computational chemists <laughs> that mm -hmm. they thought, let's set it up. And when it sort of works, that opened the, the doors to that community as well. Yeah? Um, yeah. I've been quite, uh, quite um, open to, 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 to welcome uh, some computational chemists already in, 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 in NITEX. Yeah? Because, you know, I, I said it before, uh, it's difficult to, 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 to make a, a hard border. Yeah? Yeah. Where does uh, computational <laughs> physics end and where does computational chemistry start? Now, at the end of the day, it's all Schrodinger equation. Yeah? So <laughs> it, 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 it's very difficult. Yeah? Um, so that uh, we already started to, to, to you know, to, to, to let them diffuse <laughs> into NITEX. Yeah? And I, I will apologize later to the steering committee. Yeah? But I think that's, that's inevitable that at some stage we will make a, a chemistry, a computational and theoretical chemistry 
uh, also part of the discipline of, of NITEX. Yeah? And, and the same yeah. is true for engineering. You know, um, it, it's very difficult to, 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 to have really strict uh, borders. Yeah? Um, so we, we will see how it goes, but on a case by case, basis, uh, you know, if, if the individual uh, wants to make a strong case that he needs to be part of NITEX, uh, we, we, are, we are open, yeah? you know, the, the, the more the merrier. Yeah? So um, it's just that we, we can't maybe go overboard at the moment because it's not yet our mandate, but uh, we are happy to close an eye and, and, uh, and make people happy. Yeah? <clears throat> Yeah, I think you can just talk to the chair of the steering committee, um, Francesca. Yes, yes, he will right. definitely support. <laughs> I see that there are um, chats coming in. Um, maybe I can just read one from Lazarus Marwane. He says, how can I join the Technetics program? I'm registered for postgrad, honors in computer science at the University of Limpopo. I'm still very new to research and would uh, like to learn more. Do I qualify to join the program? Yes, I mean, uh, Lazarus is, is our best candidate for our internship program because the internship program is aimed at honor students yeah? and, and to, to, to help them in, in their research efforts in, in their, in their uh, research part of the, of the honors project. So my suggestion to Lazarus is just check <laughs> on our website the call for the internship call for, for this year. We should come out very soon. And, and then we are in business. Yeah? Uh, the other activity um, that is interesting for, for Lazarus and, and his cohort yeah? uh, is our school, yeah? because uh, uh, we offer a, a series of, 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 of honors level uh, lectures open to, to everyone. And you find on our website, the whole list, the list of the, of the teachers, yeah? and you're welcome to, to engage with them and, and they will be very happy to, to, to enroll it. Yeah? As I said before, we have not yet formalized how honor students that take part in these courses uh, can get credits at their institution. Yeah? So far we have you know, kind of uh, agreements on a one by one basis, yeah? but we want to formalize it so that uh, it becomes easier for everybody. Yeah? <clears throat> because you know, one more- so Thank you. That, yeah. Yeah, no, this, this sounds uh, very good. So, so Lazarus, you got your answer, I, I think. So, so thanks Francesco. Um, yeah, we're running over time a bit. There's one more comment in the chat, so maybe we can, can look at that as the last one, Francesca. It's from Abdul Rafiu Raji. And he says, thanks for your presentation, Professor. My question concerns the so-called node. How does a university or research group become a node and what are the criteria and when will the next call be made? Yeah, no, that, that, that's perfect. Uh, you know, the, the, the plan is that uh, um, DSI decided um, that NRF will manage the call for nodes for NITEX. Yeah? And uh, we provided NRF with all the, the, the information. And uh, I think that the, the roadmap is that now in March or latest April, uh, the call of, for nodes uh, will be published by, by NRF. And then universities will have uh, to submit a, a kind of a proposal or a pre-proposal or whatever, depending on the, on the details of the call. It, it's out of my hands. Yeah? So the NRF will, will issue that call under the guidance of, uh, of DSI. And it should come out now in March or April because you know, we need to have the, 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 the first nodes of NITEX up and running by the end of the year. Yeah? So we can't wait too much. Otherwise, uh, we will be not uh, fulfilling our our roadmap yeah <clears throat> so that should come out in the next months or maximum two yeah <clears throat> thank you francesco uh, yeah, i don't see any other pressing question coming in but as i also indicated we we are a bit over time so thank you very much for for making the time from your side to come and present today and um, francesco certainly from a chpc perspective we we regard this collaboration very highly and, and the synergies are just so many that um, it, it makes absolute sense to, to continue this collaboration and build it out further. So you can be assured about the commitment from CHPC and the, the broader Nikis. Um, so thank you very much. And then with that, we can probably end this call. This is recorded. It is also available to, to others afterwards on YouTube and so on. So Francesco, if you want to make use of this, you're most welcome to also send those references. So thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, with that, I will close it. Thanks to all the participants. Keep well. Bye. Bye-bye.